Hey people, Mark here, and welcome back to another ship breakdown. This is take two on this, because my microphone decided not to tell me it was muted, but, but whatever, whatever, you, don't ha you didn't have to deal with that, so I'm not going to make it your problem. God damn it. We've got an old ship today, one whose origins can be found before the Human Covenant War. People have been asking for this one for a while, and I just realized that out of my last four ship breakdowns, three of them have been on post-war ships. So, in the spirit of evening things out, here we are with a Hillsborough-class heavy destroyer breakdown. If you make it to the end of this and enjoy it, please subscribe, I'd appreciate it, or just a like, that works too, eh? I want a big thank you to Alex for including me in the most recent cannon fodder. Jokes from the last video aside, as someone who's been playing Halo since I started to generate memories, it can't really be stated how surreal it is to have a creation of mine on the Halo Waypoint website, or to be acknowledged by 343 in any way, uh, to be seen by the sheer amount of people that watch these. So thank you, Haruspis, and thank you all of you for watching. Sources are the Encyclopedia, the Fall of Reach book, the Fall of Reach comic, and the Fall of Reach movie, as well as uh, the various reference books they've made over the years. The Hillsborough-class Heavy Destroyer was one of the most blocky and angular flying bricks that humanity ever developed, and was utilized largely by the Colonial Military Authority rather than the UNSC itself, who had their own class of heavy destroyer at the time. This old UNSC destroyer class that we don't get a name for was the first of any human ship to include a magnetic accelerator cannon in its armament, an innovation that would next be implemented on the aging diligence class destroyers in 2496. Three years later, in 2499, the CMA commissioned the Hillsboro, courtesy of Synoviet Heavy Machinery, in accordance with the growing need for more powerful and massive warships to counteract the ships that were likely being stolen and turned against the UNSC at the height of the insurrection. It was the most massive of any insurrection-era non-capital warship, with a mass of 2 million tons, and was the most powerful destroyer that humanity ever manufactured to this day, despite the fact they were decommissioned at the height of the Human Covenant War following the UNSC's absorption of the CMA. At 526 meters, the ship shares many of the design features that would come to be associated with the frigates manufactured by the same company in the early 2500s. The nearly bifurcated frame, the blocky silhouette, all give the ship a familiar look to anyone acquainted with the Paris-class heavy frigate, minus the thrusters. The class was known to lead small battle groups, namely Battle Group 4, headed by the CMA Heracles and two Karen-class frigates, Arabia and Vostok, and while the ship's arm armament and mass likely saved it, the difference in power was made clear, and would give a hint to the UNSC what direction they'd be taken in in the coming war. Said armament is about what we've come to expect from UNSC ships. The main gun is an 83B6R1 MAC. We don't know much about this MAC other than the fact that it has a very similar designation as the 83B6R3 MAC on the Karen-class light frigate. That one is a Mark II light coil MAC, and since the Hillsborough was built in the same decade as the first ship-mounted MACs, it might not be too much of a leap to assume the 83B6R1 is a Mark I MAC. As my video coming up on the Vindication class will make abundantly clear, the power and functionality of MACs is hard to determine, and and the naming conventions tend to be somewhat inconsistent this early into the universe. I am not an engineer, and I don't purport to be good at math or very knowledgeable of physics, so don't take my word as law. But what I can say is that the Hillsboro's Mac is less impressive than the Halberd-class destroyer's 14B11 R2 Mac battery, which, if you've seen my Halberd breakdown, which you probably have, it's got 65,000 goddamn views in my word, you would know it has two launch rails and is capable of firing a variety of payloads, including drones and guided missiles. Other than that, for point defense, the Hillsboro employs seven M870 Rampart Point defense guns. Four M60 Sentry autocannons also adorn this thing, accompanied by 56 M48 Ares missiles. While this armament garnered the ship a deadly reputation amongst insurrectionists, to say the ship was ineffective against Covenant ships would be an understatement. The only known Hillsboro, other than the CMA Hillsboro herself, is the CMA Heracles. The Heracles, captained by Maribo Verity, led the aforementioned Battle Group 4, which consisted of herself and two Karen-class light frigates, and were the first human naval forces to arrive at harvest after its partial glassing. This would also make them the first human naval force to ever encounter Covenant ships. Encountering a Razus pattern interdictor, the group was fired upon without warning. Arabia and Vostok not lasting more than 14 seconds, and being destroyed by a single plasma torpedo each. Heavily damaged, the Heracles fled to Reach, but before entering slip space, the Covenant managed to translate and transmit a message for them. Humans, your destruction is the will of the gods, and we are their instrument.
By 2525, the beginning of the Human Covenant War, the Karen, Paris, and Stalwart-class frigates had all been developed and entered service, alongside the Halberd-class destroyer and the Halcyon and Marathon-class cruisers. It would seem these ships proved several times more useful against the Covenant than the Hillsboro, either in being faster and more maneuverable, yet possessing a similarly powerful armament or exceeding it, namely the Paris-class heavy frigate, known for being cheap to produce but employs a much more varying armament. Fewer missiles but more point defense, a similar mech in both Shiva and Harpoon nuclear missile silos. I covered this ship in my video on the, uh, wartime frigates of the UNSC. Click up here if you want to watch that. But all three of the frigates had the same greatest strength, their versatility of use. The ability to deploy ground forces and work as air support came in especially handy when the UNSC realized that the Covenant had a particularly shoddy ground force. But the frigates also worked in many formations as satisfactory escorts. The cruisers, on the other hand, simply outmass and outpower the Hillsboro in every way. Halcyons have a Mac, a huge amount of missiles, point defense, nuclear missile silos, the capable of carrying a massive fighting force and tons of armor. Marathons are much the same, but with two entire Macs and even more point defense and missiles. The 2525 refit of the Pillar of Autumn, which would eventually evolve into the 2553 Autumn class cruisers, was just further proof that the Hillsboro simply didn't have much of a role to play in the UNSC in the coming years. While I'm sure the destroyer would be and was great for use as a policing ship, punching way above the weight class of whatever the insurrection could scrounge together, it was utterly unprepared for use against the monstrous Covenant ships it encountered early on. It's no surprise that by 2547, when the CMA was basically absorbed by the UNSC, the majority of these ships would be assigned to guard duty or scrapped for parts. I like this one. It's really cool to me that it looks sort of like a Paris-class frigate and was made by the same company a few years prior. I can appreciate the presence of ships in a sci-fi universe that aren't garbage, but simply lack certain capabilities of newer or more versatile ones. It fills out the universe in a believable way, like these would exist. They feel natural, like the navy they were made for was going through a transition period, which they were. The introduction of Max completely revolutionized the UNSC and gave them that slight edge they needed to take on some Covenant ships. But the Hillsboro was introduced like just a decade too early. They didn't have the multi-rule capability of other frigates. Uh, they didn't have the firepower or armor of the cruisers. And as such, they were left behind. I also think that an older UNSC ship going up against the Covenant for the first time, one known for being pretty powerful at that, made for a pretty satisfying narrative event. But that's all I've got for you today. Subscribe and like if you liked it, pretty peas. I've got a Twitch channel too if you're interested, I guess. I'm making my way through Resident Evil 4 right now. If you really liked it, uh, like really liked it, the super thanks button is down there. If you didn't know what that was, like me a few months ago, it's basically the like streamer donations. I take time off to do these videos. That said, I'm uh, currently unemployed, <laughs> but uh, I could be playing video games instead, you know. Any of the money made here would go straight to bettering the videos, or school, or necessities like food, you know. Anywho, bye-bye. Thanks, Alec.